so hi everyone today we will be discussing a highly technical topic that is grpo algorithm in reinforcement learning so why are we discussing this because if you have heard of deep seek model uh, which has been released recently and has taken the generative ai world by storm it was a grpo algorithm that was used in the model which is leading to all the entire us market crash so just assume the power of an algorithm which can create a entire stock market to crash out so today we will be discussing about how does grpo work and how it is getting used in deep seek it is a reinforcement learning algorithm so i think most of you won't be knowing the basics of reinforcement learning so i would suggest you to have a brief around it if not in this particular tutorial i would be drawing out some major concepts from reinforcement learning that are getting used in the paper and in the grpo algorithm so first of all a few topics that we should know before jumping on to anything i would tell you how reinforcement learning works so what we do we create up an environment assume it to be a gaming environment for example and then you create an agent inside it for example you wish to create a game using reinforcement learning to make a person reach his house like you start from 0 and you need to reach to 10 and there are multiple obstacles now using reinforcement learning what you will do you will be every time initiating the agent with the knowledge it has right so initially when you will starting with iteration 1 it would be having zero knowledge using an algorithm called as policy as you can see here what would be happening we would be choosing out our next action what is the policy in rl that is the case so policy is an algorithm which helps you to choose what action to be taken next for example as you can see there are two types of policies deterministic and stochastic stochastic is between probability based so you will be running an algorithm and depending upon the probability of different actions you will be taking a deterministic always selects the same action so it is mostly rule based so now depending upon the policy algorithm you would be taking your next action and trying to go as far as possible in the game now once you die out in the game for example there is no possible way to reach home the episode ends there and then you get a reward for whether you are able to reach the house or not like for example in one episode if you reach the house at 200 steps and in the next one you reach the house in 10 100 steps so in that case in the second case you would be getting a more reward because you reach the house in a smaller number of steps so this is how reinforcement learning is trained now you will train the agent for 10000 epochs for example it will have the data of 10000 iterations from going to 0 to 100 and in this 100000 iterations you would be slowly making adjustment to this particular policy algorithm right so that it start preferring the most the best the shortest uh, path to reach the house so this is how reinforcement learning works i would suggest you to better give a brief read but this is how the basics of reinforcement learning are now coming to grpo what is that group relative policy optimization so basically it is an algorithm to improve the policy algorithm that we were talking about so this is an uh, approach to improve your policy algorithm helps the mo model learn better by comparing different actions and making small control updates using a group of observations so we'll first of all try to understand by an example and then we'll jump on to the mathematics so assume that you're teaching a robot to play a simple game where it has to choose between different paths to reach a goal i think it's very similar to snakes and ladder that are discussing now grpo helps a robot to do this by trying different paths the robot will try out different paths from its current strategy policy so basically using the current policy whatever logic you are following to choose the next action it will be trying out a few paths okay okay go to whatever you got on the die comparing the performance once you have got enough samples for example given the same policy if you took 10 episodes right now you have experience of 10 episodes you would be now coming back and checking out what action should have been taken better and then you will make adjustment to the algorithm so assume that the robot let the robot is in a maze and has to choose between three paths a b and c to reach the goal the robot tries out each path a few times and record the results path a succeeds two out of three times path b succeeds one out of three times and path c succeeds three out of three times so what is the best path for now that is path c because out of the six samples that we have got using the same policy path c has a success rate of 100% path a has 66 and path b is 33 comparing the paths path c is clearly a winner now how you will adjust the policy the robot will 
uh, adjust the policy algorithm so that it prefers path C more often as compared to other two, but it won't make it 100%. Do remember that in reinforcement learning, there is a trade off called as a <coughs> exploitation and exploration. So, exploitation is basically you choose the best path you know right now, while exploration is you also wish to try out new paths because, for example, you know a shortcut already, but there might be existing a better shortcut than that too. So, there is always a scope of exploration left. That is why we are saying, but it does not completely ignore paths A and B. It still tries them occasionally to see if they improve. Control updates. The robot makes sure not to change its strat uh, strategy too drastically. This is very important. What I said, the policy algorithm should be changed very slowly. For example, it might increase the probability of choosing path C from 30 to 50%. So initially, if the probability was 30%, it might improve it to 50%. So now, out of 100 times, uh, 50 times, the algorithm would be choosing path C to go, but not 100%. This way, it can still explore. So I think this is a basic understanding of how GRPO works. If you have now got a basic sense that you are trying to uh, accumulate multiple episodes, multiple experiences, then looking at the final group of observations, and then finally making a change in your policy. This is what GRPO does. So now let's jump on to the mathematics of the algorithm. So GRPO algorithm mathematics, first of all, assume that policy is defined by pi theta. And this is the policy algorithm, pi theta A for A, pipe S. So what does this mean? A stands for action and S stands for state. So for a given state and for a given action, what is the policy, right? Makes sense. Given a state, what should be the action taken? This is what the policy does for us. The goal is to maximize the expected cumulative reward J theta. So what does it do you mean by cumulative reward? So again, go back to the snakes and ladder algorithm, uh, that game. Once you want to reach from 1 to 100, you would be throwing the dice multiple times. You would be reaching to 20, 25, 30, then might be back to 24. You, you better buy a snake. You'll again go to 40, 50, 60, 70. So there are multiple states before you reach the final end goal, right? So this is what we say about cumulative reward. So eventually you would be getting a bigger reward once you reach the final state, but you should be given some reward once you're moving in that particular direction, right? So the reward given at 25 would be lesser than the reward given at 100, but it won't be zero because you want the agent to learn that, okay, this is the path to reach 100. Makes sense. So this is what we are saying about cumulative reward. So for every state that helps you to reach to the final state, we would be getting a reward. And the goal is to maximize this added reward, the final reward that we get from adding everything. So the, this particular equation might look a little challenging, but it's quite easy. Summation of reward STAT. So reward given the state, given the action. So given us, if you are at 25 and you threw and you threw four from your dice, what is the reward that should be given? That's it. It's quite easy. Group sampling for a given state, GRPO generates a group of n actions using the current policy pi theta each action ai is a sample from the policy so now you are generating multiple samples right what we said we are trying to group we are not making changes after every action that we are taking into the policy try to relate this with stochastic gradient if you remember gradient descent what we do while we update the weights of a model uh, you run for it particular steps and then you go and update it after for say 100 steps you won't be updating the weights of the model after every sample right that is why we usually use mini batch gradient descents. If you know, this is very, very similar to that. Reward scoring. Each action AI is evaluated using a reward function. As we mentioned, the reward function could be based on the immediate reward or a discounted sum of future rewards. I think we should not be jumping much into this. Just assume that for a given action, we get a reward. Advantage calculation. So advantage is an advanced concept in reinforcement learning. I will try to explain it to you. So advantage tell us whether the action that you have taken is better or worse than the average action. Makes sense. So how it is calculated? You first of all compute the average reward of the entire group. So whatever actions you have taken so far, RAI, you are adding that. And that advantage for each action AI is the summation that you have got. You would be subtracting the reward minus the summation. So if is greater than zero action a is better than average it makes sense right you're taking an average and then you're subtracting that average from the current reward for what you have got for the current action a so for example you took five actions and the reward was uh, the mean was five so you got 
uh, for one of the actions you got four for one of the actions you got six as a reward for one of the action you got one so the average become five now for the current action if you get seven so seven minus five would be two that is a positive number it shows that the current action is better than the average action that we have taken this is what advantage talks about policy update now this particular advantage would be used to update the gr the policy parameters the policy the neural network that we are using to generate the action we would be using this advantage variable with some uh, scary looking equation that i have not included here to update the gr to update the model that is getting used for policy that is choosing which action to take now there is another concept called a scale divergence to ensure that the updated policy policy assume it to be a neural network does not deviate much from the old policy grp includes a scale divergence constant this this constant ensure that stable updates are done and you don't like breach any value like for example you are making the policy from 1 to 100 that should not be done so you want to update the weights in a very subtle manner you don't want to make shocking values changes into the your updates so that is why the kl divergence constant is brought the entire objective of the grp algorithm is to maximize the expected cumulative reward the j theta that we showed while keeping the policy updates stable using the kl divergence i just spend some time you will be able to understand how grp works it is a little tricky algorithm because it is uh, coming into the advanced versions of reinforcement learning and i think most of the audience is not Uh, aware of reinforcement learning as a whole so just friends sometimes it's not that difficult try to have the intuitive understanding you can leave the mathematics behind now why does grpo works group comparison very very important uh, very similar to what we do in mini, uh, mini gradient boosting mini batch so by comparing actions within a group grp reduces variance that we do in mini batch gradient descent as well control updates scale divergence constant prevent large destabilizing changes efficient grp avoids the need to evaluate every possible action now coming to the most important part how grp is used for training llms like deep seek so group sampling for a given prompt the llm generates multiple responses it's very similar to that reward scoring a reward model evaluates the quality of each response that we get from the llm advantage is calculated over this group of output that the llm has generated the responses are compared to the group average reward to determine which are better or worse and accordingly the policy is changed the llm policy is adjusted to favor high rewarding responses iterative training this process repeats gradually improving the llm's ability to generate high quality aligned text and this is how reinforcement learning is getting used in training llms this is a little tricky uh, tutorial try to spend some time try to understand how reinforcement learning works before jumping on to grpo i think you would be able to ga- uh, capture most of the things but just the essence is that generate more samples create a group of them generate the cumulative reward calculate the advantage advantage is the important concept and then use that advantage to update the algorithm that you are using to generate the policy right and repeat it multiple times till you get best results thank you so much